Hello everybody, I'm Annihilate and you're at Wonderful Gaming. So what we're doing today, we're testing every weapon in 7 days to die, what the headshot damage is, and what weapon should you be going for on what specific build. So let's get straight into it, we're starting right now. First things first, the testing parameters. We are testing all weapons at good quality settings or green and we have tried to eliminate as much variation between the different weapons as possible. We have also got all the required skills unlocked for all the different weapons. So that's for the knuckle dusters, that's all the skills it needs. The same for sledgehammers and all other skills are at, at least level two for all those skills. And it's also, there are no perks used and there are no books used and no modifications. So let's get straight into the testing. The first weapon we're going to be looking at is bows. Now the primitive bow and the wooden bow pretty much have nearly exactly the same damage of 72 for the primitive and 74 for the wooden. The compound bow goes up to 88 which is quite a jump from the other two. The damage pretty much stays the same across from iron and steel arrows. If you are shooting an armored target like a soldier zombie you can expect your damage to half. So from 72 down to roughly 36. Compound bows are the highest tier of bow, but they're also the most difficult to get. So spears are divided into bone, iron and steel. So bone spears do 108 headshot damage to unarmored targets. They do 54 damage to armored targets. Iron spears do 127 damage and 63 damage to armored targets. And steel spears do 192 damage and 96 damage to armor targets which is quite a surprising amount of damage but again the problem with spears if you throw them missed your past your target or you know they disappear or whatever it's a small problem well knives is a quite an interesting one there is a couple of different ones your candy cane bow knife from the normal knife and the machete the stun baton I'm including into this group because it seems to do exactly the same amount of damage as all the other knives. So all the knives, barring the machete, all seem to do the same amount of damage, which is 70 damage. Um, I don't know if this is something weird or it's just the way the knives are, but they all seem to do around 70 damage. The machete does 125 damage and all the knives drop down to 40 damage when attacking an armored target. The machete drops to roughly... 58 damage. So I have tested this three times and I still get the same results. Uh, I think also the knives add the bleeding effect so that does increase the damage over time where most of the other weapons don't do uh, the bleed effect. So that does uh, come up for with some of the damage. Now knuckle dusters come in three different variants. They come in leather wraps, iron knuckles and steel knuckles. Now they all do increasing amounts of damage as we will cover shortly. The thing with knuckle dusters is they do a lot of little damage quickly and they're not as powerful as any of the other weapons but the speed of your strikes and the upgradability of your strikes is sets them apart from any other weapon. So a leather wrap does 40 damage as base, an iron knuckle does 52 and steel does 79. Again, you can just halve those values to get your damage against armor targets. So 20, 25, and 36. Our next grouping of weapons is our sledgehammers. So there are three different kinds, stone, iron, and steel. Now the sledgehammers themselves do fantastic amounts of damage. They really do but they do suck a huge amount of stamina back. So a stone sledgehammer does 117 damage to unarmored and 56 damage to armored targets. Iron slammages do 200 and 100 and steels do a massive 300 and 150. So if you want to really beat the snot out of a zombie, a sledgehammer is definitely the way to go. Now, this one is hugely, hugely subjective because of the nature of it. It's our explosive section. 
So we're going to start with the weakest one is going to be our pipe bombs. Now pipe bombs do 144 damage, but they do an area of effect damage as well. So it's I think up to three zombies across, they'll do 144 damage to each zombie surrounding the central zombie. Now contact grenades do 271 damage and normal grenades do 245 damage or thereabouts. Now another one that was really difficult to test is Molotovs. Now Molotovs have a bit of variation built into them as their nature, but they don't really do much more than 250. It can spike up to 270, but generally it's Molotovs around 250 damage and it doesn't help spamming them. You can only use one Molotov at a time on a group of zombies. You have to wait for it to burn out and then use another one, or you're just gonna be actually wasting the Molotov. Now Dynamite does a huge 422 damage but you can think dynamite is a really difficult and a really expensive item to make but the last one on our list is rocket launchers now the rocket launcher does a mind-bending 582 damage which is pretty much guaranteed to kill any zombie outright except if they are radiated any other normal including a feral zombie will die to a rocket launcher but the irradiated generally start around 900 health, so you can see it'll take two rocket launchers to kill them. Okay, so we're now gonna be looking at our guns. Now guns come with three different kinds of ammo type, normal or full metal jacket, hollow point, and armor piercing. Now, before we get started, armor piercing doesn't do any extra damage to a single zombie. What it does do, it damages a zombie behind the first zombie, which does equal amounts of damage to it. So for instance, a pistol does 112 damage, headshot damage, and does 112 headshot damage to a zombie behind the first one. So it's really good at that. So if you, you must keep that in mind if you're using armor piercing rounds. They don't do any more additional damage, but they do penetrate zombies automatically without even using the penetration skill. So if you combine that with the penetration skill, your damage can go up quite a lot. So let's get started. So pistols do 112 damage and 56 damage to armored targets. And the same again with armor piercing and hollow points do 146 damage and 73 damage to armored targets. MP5 does again the same 112 and 146 because they use the same ammo. Now you'll find any weapon that shares the same ammo as another weapon will generally do the same kinds of damage, but it's the range and the refire rate that generally makes it different. Now a desert vulture does 242 damage with um, the 45 ammo users, and it does 326 damage with hollow points. That is a mind-blowing amount of <laughs> damage from a pistol. Blunderbuss, now the Blunderbuss took me ages to measure because of its very nature. Now Blunderbuss does 261 damage, or thereabouts. I found it varying between 261 to 326 damage on the blunderbuss depending on what you were shooting what size of zombie because it scatters so much the 44 magnum does 245 49 damage and again 326 damage so you can see it's the same variation as the desert vulture because they are sharing the same ammo type now shotguns all three of the shotguns do the same level of damage. I actually tested this one five times because I couldn't believe what I was seeing. At point blank range with a shotgun using the standard, basically deer uh, pellets, does 380 damage to a zombie at point blank range. Obviously the more further away you stand, the less it becomes point blank, 380. And call it 200 for if it's an armored target. If you're doing the other types, the flak doesn't really do much, the door penetration rounds, but the, so the slugs do 340 damage, but the huge advantage of a slug round is its distance. It goes a lot 
further than a standard buckshot round does. So the sawn off, the pump, and the auto shotgun all do the same amount of damage, more or less, but it's the refire rate of the round of the guns that makes the difference between them. So next is our rifles. So we're going to start with the AK. The AK does roughly 132 damage and what 67 to uh, armored targets. And if you're using hollow point, 184 damage and so it does 100 to armored targets. M16 or the tactical assault rifle does 141 damage and 70 damage to armored targets and it does 200 with hollow point and again 100 with the armored targets. M60 does 147 damage and 78 damage to armor targets but it does 200 and nine damage if you're firing the hollow point. So a little bit more than the standard rounds, but its refire rate is massive. Our next set of weapons are our rifles. The hunting rifle does 218 damage and 109 to armor targets and hollow points to 268 and 135. Now the marksman, you'll be surprised, does a little bit less damage. It does 206 and 103 and 259 and 129. The difference here is obviously the variance in the weapons themselves, but also the marksman has got a far higher refire rate than the hunting rifle does. The sniper rifle comes in at 228 damage and 135 armor targets, and hollow points do 280 damage and 135 against armored targets. Welcome guys, there was a huge amount of testing, data gathering, I retested and tested these things sometimes up to five different times just to make sure I got accurate results. Now obviously the weapons themselves, you do get variants in weapons and that kind of thing, that's why I've tested without perks and without the books as well to make sure this is just base damage. Now we're going to straight into the bows first, now the bows you get the primitive wooden and compound bow. I would definitely move off the wooden bow or the primitive bow as soon as you can and get into the wooden bow. Um, because the wooden bow does offer a bit more damage, not a huge amount, but it does matter. Uh, the compound bow, obviously you would move up to that when you find it, but the compound bow is a lot more difficult to make and use a lot more parts. So the wooden bow is a nice compromise between the two. Your sledgehammers, the sledgehammers are really, they, they are the powerhouses for melee attacks in the game. They do stacks of damage. I mean, even the stone sledgehammer does 117 damage. Two power attacks using a stone sledgehammer is enough to kill most normal zombies, which is just phenomenal damage. And a steel slammer, a sledgehammer with a power attack will kill any normal zombie in one hit because it does 300 damage. So I would go for the iron sledgehammer as soon as I can and then upgrade to steel whenever you get enough steel to do so. The knives and the stun baton are a tricky bunch because it doesn't really matter which knife you use they all seem to do the same damage which is 70 base damage so we've got the, obviously the normal knife the bone knife and the machete the machete is different because it's more of a sword than anything else the machete does 125 damage which is a nice amount of damage but the chances of you finding machete quickly are not great so i would get up to a normal knife as quick as you can after that, we've got our clubs. So the wooden club, baseball bat, steel club. Now the baseball bat does about 12 more damage than a wooden club, which is a nice intermediate again. So, but I found that steel club, man, that thing wrecks faces. It's fast, it doesn't use as much ammo, uh, uh, ammo <laughs> as much stamina as the steel sledgehammer does. I would move on to that as quickly as I can, as soon as I can find one or make one. Spears. Now spears are a little difficult because they are both long range, you can throw them and you can stab people in the face with them. So you obviously do a lot more damage when you throw the spear, but you've also got the chance of losing it into a pack of zombies. So it's a, quite a difficult thing. Um, again, going for this iron spear before or just, as soon as you can, because the steel spear does offer you quite a bit more damage, but getting to steel is a really high level task. So I would stick with a as iron spear as long as you can, to be honest. 
Explosives now, explosives are very, very situational. It depends entirely on where you are, what you are doing. Do not use dynamite near your base. You're going to be rebuilding your base because dynamite does 3,000 damage to blocks. Yeah, it's a massive amount of damage. So it's not something you want to use near your base. The same with the rocket launcher. Do not use it near your base. You will blow your own stuff up. However, the contact grenades, normal grenades, Molotov cocktails do a lot of damage to the normal zombies and I highly recommend you do use them, especially on Horde Nights because then you're going to really uh, rack and pack and stack them. Now, the one thing I didn't test on camera was the time charged. Now, time charged really just sucks at killing zombies. It really is terrible. It is more designed for penetrating safes and buildings and doors and things like that. So I didn't even bother because you can only use it if you place it on a zombie. You have to literally walk up and put it onto him. So I don't recommend using the time charge for killing zombies. That's why I didn't show it on camera. Our shotguns. Shotguns are really good um, if you're point blank. The, obviously, the sawn off yeah two shots and you're done so that is a problem if you're facing a large group of zombies the pump action much better it offers five rounds instead of two so you know your damage per second is much higher but all the shotguns do the same amount of damage i couldn't believe this when i tested it but i did test it three times which is 380 damage so if you put a shotgun into a zombie's ear and pull the trigger you will pretty much kill any base level zombie you will not kill a feral or a radiated zombie because the radiated zombies generally start at 900 health that's why they are so difficult to kill so getting to the pump shotguns over the sawn off would be my recommendation because the pump also offers a bit more range than your normal gun does. And lastly is, or not lastly, but our pistols, again, you get your normal pistol, which is a 9mm, and then you get your SMG, your Desert Vulture, and your 44 Magnum. Now, out of all of those, I would probably, personally, I use the normal pistol and the Desert Vulture. The SMG is great. If you want to burn through all your ammo nearly instantly, it's that's a lot of damage, but you miss shots and um, it just you over you overkill things if I can put it that way. I stick with the normal pistol and then when I can I move up to the desert vulture because the desert vulture just kicks the 44 magnums butt in DPS every day of the week. It just the way it is. Now your rifles. Now, this is both your assault rifles and your marksman rifles. So the AK, great gun. Um, it does 132 damage. And then your M16 or your tactical assault rifle does about 11 more damage than that. But they're sharing the same ammo. The tactical assault is a little more accurate. It shoots a bit further and faster. That's the main difference between the rifles. M60, if you can find one, go for it. Just be prepared to make tons and tons of ammo because it eats ammo. It does also quite a lot more damage. Um, it does about seven or eight more damage per shot, but it does its refire rate is much higher than anything else. And then our hunting rifles, marksman, sniper rifles. The weird thing here was that marksman rifle does less damage in my testing than the hunting rifle is, but it fires five times faster than the hunting rifle does. So you have to take that into consideration. So for me, if I'm shooting a deer or something like that, I just stick with the hunting rifle. If I'm a building, marksman rifle, a marksman rifle or the sniper rifle. It depends on which I have access to. The sniper rifle, again, is very rare for me. I don't really find it all that often even with uh, Lucky Looter 3 or 4 or 5. Blunderbuss, Blunderbuss, great weapon. Do not ignore the Blunderbuss. Blunderbuss is really good at starting off. The ammo is cheap to make, and you can use it for a long time as long as you are careful with it because it doesn't really shoot further than three blocks effectively, and if you get swarmed by five zombies, they're going to have your lunch. So be really careful using a Blunderbuss. It's great at picking off single zombies. Just don't try and take on 20. You will get killed. And the last thing is our crossbows. Now, the crossbows come in two variants, your normal crossbow and your compound crossbow. And they do a lot more damage than a normal bow. A crossbow does 91 damage compared to 72 from a normal bow. So you can see that's, what, 19 more damage straight off the hop. And the compound crossbow does 110 damage 
which is a huge amount of damage out of a bow, but it is the best bow out of all the bows. So chances of you finding one before day 14, not great, if at all, even with a high level lucky looter. So normal crossbow until you can find one, normal crossbow or the wooden bow would be my go-to because there's not that much more damage. There is, but you know, crossbows tend to be a high level item that you tend to find after you even find a compound bow, is my experience with those. All right, guys, that is my recommendations for you. I hope this helps you a little bit in picking what weapons you want to go. Now, I'm well aware that there is no perfect build, there is a million ways to play seven days today. I'm well aware of that. Um, you can go demolitions and then you can go hunting rifles. So I cannot give you the perfect build because no such thing exists. It depends entirely on how you want to play it and how high you want to play it. Because eventually you can get most of the skills to get most of the weapons too efficiently. But I would recommend focusing in the beginning game, focus on a, like a hunting rifle and a pistol and a, a, a assault rifle, for instance. Focus on one set of weapons if you can. Um, don't go, okay, I'm going to go shotgun, pistol, and try and get every weapon before you you can. You're not going to get all of it to a high enough level too once your horde knots start getting really difficult. So focus on a few weapons. Um, normally, well not, normally I would go for a pistol, the pistols, so I can, because pistols are easy to find and the ammo is cheap to make. So I tend to stay with pistols. Pistols, hunting rifles for long distance if I'm hunting a deer or whatever. And depending from there, are either explosives or shotguns. So it depends entirely on what I feel like playing. Sometimes I'll go with a spear and an AK build, which is, a I find, a really effective build because the spears uh, do a lot of damage, except when you throw them away, which I've done more than once. And the AKs and the assault rifles do a lot, the refire rate is good, and they do a lot of damage and the ammo is not that difficult to make. But that's it from me. If you like this video, please give it a two thumbs up, share it far and wide, and we'll be back soon with another video. Have a great day and see you soon.